Hello everyone, welcome to this update video. This is, um, this has been a long time coming. So I'm gonna tell you right now, this is not gonna be as formal as what you're used to. It's also going to exist, which you may not be quite used to that either. So, first things first, I want to mention right now that the build you are about to see has been worked on since October last year. I would also like to mention that this build has only been worked on by one person for the most part. So before we start getting into the specifics and what's going to be done in the future, etc, etc, you shall get a taste of what's been worked on so far. How about some Siberia? Welcome to Siberia. Or at least a ripped version of it. This map and the weapon models you see are ripped directly from Time Splitters 2 and are currently being used as placeholders. You will not see these models in the final release of the game. As you can see, the AI is behaving pretty much like it should. They patrol around the map, they react to friendly deaths, they react to gunfire, and on top of that, the cameras also work. In a minute, you'll also see me trigger one of these cameras and see me get attacked by two guys, because, uh, that's not how you're supposed to play. For those of you familiar with how the map is laid out, you'll know that a few enemies spawn in, such as this sniper. Because we currently do not have animations in place for the timed mines, it's just using the pistol animation. You'll notice later in the video the exact same thing with just about any other weapon which doesn't have an animation. Again, these are all placeholders, including the first-person animations for the guns, as we will be using updated HD models, which will have a far more elaborate reloading animation. But we're still going to keep it short. More on that later. So moving on ahead, we have the later section of the level, where we have our first interaction with zombies. But first... Let's control this gun turret and have a little look-see at how we can deal with this guard here. And this one too. So yes, as soon as we pick up this data disk, all hell breaks loose. The zombies can be killed through body shots, but the ideal method is by knocking their heads off. Obviously, this will play a big part in Behead the Undead later on. Siberia was mostly used as a testing ground for these story mode elements, trying to figure out what was needed and how it should be accomplished. And for the most part, it's done its job. Of course, there are a couple of other things we should look at first before delving deep into these mechanics and how they function. And I think we should have a little preview of the arcade mode. Now, uh, I'm not going to be going too deep into this right now, so... Let's just have a little montage play.
So that little montage was put together to showcase that just about every game mode is in. The few exceptions are some of the exclusive ones to Time Splitters 1, and you may have not seen all of the game modes, a couple I didn't show were Flame Tag, Knockout, and Bag Tag. Last Stand and Escort are currently not implemented, and Assault has no implementation in terms of levels, but the functionality is there. Now, before you ask, yes, all of the characters you saw me fighting in that video were bots. So yes, there are bots. But also, before you ask, yes, this does work with multiplayer. There's still quite a bit to do, but in terms of a feature-complete multiplayer game, it's there. There is currently no implementation of any online API, we're currently using a direct connection, so the person joining has to have the host's IP, and there's also currently no dedicated server solution, meaning that if the admin isn't there, players can't change level or change game modes. We're going to figure out a way to deal with this at some point, but for now, it requires a host to be present. In terms of game mode customization, all of the customization options that were in Time Splitters 2 and 3 are there. You can customize the bot sets, the weapon sets, you can set your score, set your time limit, etc. And we're not limiting ourselves to what were in the original games. We can definitely add more over time. So next we're going to take a brief look at challenge mode, just to showcase that the implementation for it is there. I will be playing Behead the Undead, or at least a very simplified version of it. No actual levels are used here, it's just test areas. Here you can see my original score, I did pretty well I think, as well as my trophy. I probably won't beat this on this video, because for the sake of showcasing the mode, I'm probably going to need to die. I don't have much to say here, I'll just let the gameplay speak for itself. Of course, I won't be playing this for too long, I want to quickly showcase the timeout killing. So as soon as you exit the area which you are placed into inside of Behead the Undead, you will have three seconds to get back into that area before you are killed. Not a great score, but it's there. And pretty much the implementation for glass smashing and cardboard cutout shootout is also in. Granted, they are not currently in a state where I can show it, so you're just going to have to take my word for it. Before moving on to art, we will now rapid fire through all of the additional features which require a bit of extra explanation. If set on fire, you can use a fire extinguisher on yourself by pointing it at the ground like you can in Time Splitters 2. You can also extinguish any enemies you set on fire. You can stick mines onto people and essentially ensure their death. Once a mine is on you, you cannot remove it. There is a dedicated grenade hotkey to throw grenades like in Time Splitters Future Perfect. The two grenade types you can get is a basic grenade which just explodes and then the sticky plasma grenade. Dual wielding weapons in this game works exactly how it does in the original trilogy. Each gun has its own ammo pool, meaning you can effectively reload one while still shooting the other. Rather than having to switch fire mode for the remote mine when throwing it, you can simply just press the secondary fire key and the mines will explode automatically. This was done for balancing purposes, and when the model for the time mine is complete, you will see an extra hand holding a detonator whenever you have mines to blow up. Like in Time Splitters 2, cameras tend to have a control panel which you can use to see through them. However, you cannot control them like you could the gun turret in Siberia, but you can turn them off. There are four common AI types, and those are passive AI, AI that when they see you, they will be alerted, AI that automatically attacks you in attack AI, AI that take cover and throw grenades, and AI that patrol around and work like passive AI. Scripted events are inside of the game as animated sequences that can be played during gameplay. This will be very useful inside of Future Perfect's campaign where a lot of animated cutscenes happen during gameplay. Implementation of Time Splitters 1 zombies are also in. These zombies do not die unless you shoot them in the head. Body shots will just knock them down and they'll get back up immediately. These zombies can also wield weapons which if you do knock them down instead of shooting their head off, you can disarm them. You can mount gun turrets. At this moment in time, explosions linger rather than dealing one wave of damage, meaning you could walk into an explosion after it's just happened and still kill yourself. This may change. Zombie AI and animations for the Future Perfect variant are in very early stages but currently underway. The OG time splitters are implemented and they're as fierce as ever. Okay, that was a lot and there's still plenty of stuff to talk about, but 
I will leave that for another time. Next, keeping in tradition with our usual updates, we will be showing what the art team has been up to. Of course, as a warning, the art team and the team in general has downsized significantly since the last update. So don't be expecting too much. I'll use this as an opportunity to talk about the game plan. As you know, Time Splitters Rewind is a remake of all three Time Splitters games in HD, and as proven by our lack of updates recently, this has not been an easy undertaking. This is all due to a lack of direction caused by the sheer scale of this project. Team members were often working at entirely opposite ends of the series, one person working on Time Splitters 1 levels, while another person worked on Time Splitters Future Perfect weapons. In order to combat this with our admittedly smaller team, we've decided on a new direction and have made plans for releases. Overall, the plan is to work on the games chronologically, starting with Time Splitters 1, and then release levels sequentially as updates along with their respective characters and weapons. We will continue doing this until Time Splitters 2, where we'll continue with that game. This way we can get updates out in a timely manner and have something playable to give you guys. If by some chance something happens that stops us from developing the project, then at least you'll still have that playable build and not all of our work will have been in vain. At the end of the video I will go into more detail matters concerning behind the scenes development. But before leaving I will state our team is very small and due to the lack of dedicated level designers we're not too sure when these releases will begin. If you have experience in that field and would like to help out feel free to shoot us a message. On that note, there are a couple of areas we'd also like to fill which people may not be aware of. Level designers is an obvious one alongside weapon and character modelers, but we'd also like someone to help us with balancing and designing the game. In case you didn't know, the series has inconsistent weapon statistics across the three games. That's all for the update! Hope you enjoyed! If your interest was solely in the contents of the update itself and not what's been happening behind the scenes, then this is probably the place to turn off the video. Hope you enjoyed it and have a wonderful day. As for the rest of you, well, let's get to it. So while the credits are flashing up on the screen of who's done what going towards this build, I want to just say that I'm going to be really candid about this. I'm Alfred Turner. I was on the team in 2013 and then left in 2016. I did a History of Rewind video with an also now ex-team member, which basically covered my experience with the project up to that point. So I want to start by saying that the build that you saw was made entirely by me, uh, with obviously a few exceptions. Shrink was created by one of the programmers from Rewind, and the M16 weapon model you saw was created by a weapon artist from Rewind, but the build was created by myself over the course of a couple of months. I started it in October, and at that time I was not actually a part of Rewind. After having left the team, I stuck around and still spoke to a few people at Rewind, but for the most part, for a good portion of 2018, it was actually pretty dead. But of course, as I had been on the project for so long, I'd made quite a few friends. Friends who I played video games with. We played through a lot of old games, and of course, we wanted so desperately to play through Time Splitters, or at least play the multiplayer portion of Time Splitters. So... I had a funny thought, and started work on this build. This build was never intended to be Time Splitters Rewind, it was intended to be a personal project, and as a joke, we called it Glitch Splitters Rewinded. Um, you probably noticed in the video the name Glitch Splitters appearing on any of the menu screens. After a while of working on this, I showed it to the current team lead of Time Splitters, and, well, he really liked it. And then I just started building it up from there to where we are now. Overall, that was over the course of about two months. Two months without any sleep. Around December and January, I didn't work on it at all. And now we're here in March, where I'm making this update video. I would like to stress that that's pretty much why you see it in the state that it is. It's a lot of progress for quite a short amount of time, but if you take into account how long Rewind has been in development, a lot of people may not see it that way. The project has been faced with many, many problems, and if you want to know more, you can always go find that History of Rewind video. Not everything in that video is 100% accurate, but overall, it tells the story of what happened when I joined, joined the team and some of the first hardships we faced as a team. So yeah, all of you guys who have been waiting on Rewind for the past... Oh goodness, how long has it been now? That was in 2013. Oh goodness, 2019 now! Well, all of you guys who've been waiting, I'm deeply sorry. I have had no control over this, and pretty much no one on the team currently does either. It's been a lot of coming and going. I just hope that all of the expectations and issues you have with the project, you don't 
take out on the current team or, you know, me. But yeah, that's all I really have to say. There'll be a few links in the description on how to contact some members of the team, of the current team, that is, if you have any questions. There's also a Discord, which I know plenty of you are probably in. I managed to get this far into the video. And you can always ask us questions there. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening to my rambling at the end there. And keep in mind, this is not a professional project. We aren't professionals. We're a bunch of amateurs. Thank you and have a good day.